There's a growing problem with photography that not a lot of people are talking about. But because you're here and I'm here, I want to have this conversation with you and see if we can solve it together. Photography is dying a slow and painful death. It's not by choice, but it's something that I feel like the way short form content is going and the way TikTok has been and the way that Instagram is right now with promoting video content first, it's something that has personally affected myself as well as I'm sure many of you. As much as I would like to blame Instagram for all of this, I think the real problem comes down to it's something that we need to solve. But in order to figure out how to do that, we need to back up to 2019 and early 2020. As many of you probably know, that was the start of the pandemic and really the start of when TikTok started to become popular. At that point, it was still very much a dancing and trend app and the idea of copy culture was becoming extremely mainstream where that was the thing to do. You would see a trend, you would copy it, someone else would do it and that would just perpetuate over and over. Okay, I think we need to get to the top of these stairs. It would be unfair if I blamed absolutely all of this on TikTok because copy culture certainly existed before TikTok in the form of people seeing a photo on Instagram and wanting to go out, take the same photo and essentially copy the photo that they saw online. But the unique part about TikTok is that it gave photographers who were stuck in a rut of always seeing the same thing on Instagram. Maybe you were someone who, you know, didn't have a huge following on Instagram and thought, you know, TikTok would be your opportunity to gain a following. And so what happened in early 2020 was that a lot of us started jumping on those TikTok trends, but then making them so that they fit the photography niche. And what that meant was a lot of before and afters. Here's a whole bunch of my photos, you know, like photo, 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 edited to a pop song. But then some of us got a little bit more creative and started thinking, well, you know, I'm gonna show the behind the scenes. I'm gonna get another camera angle that shows how I take the photos, essentially a video of me taking photos. Admittedly, a little bit of that becomes inauthentic because you'd get a lot of pages that would say things like, I went up to this person and asked to take their photo and they said no and then I showed them my work and then they changed their mind. They're showing photos, but really in a video format. All right, brief interruption because the view looks amazing. <laughs> Mosquito. I'll be the first to admit that I've fallen victim to a lot of these early TikTok trends, especially the before and after of editing a raw and showing the finished product. And now it seems like that's all Instagram Reels is. Instagram is so heavily built around photos and photographers and people showing their content that that feels like the right thing to do for a lot of people. You see your friend doing it, you see another photographer doing it, and you think, well, I guess that's what everyone's doing, so I have to do it too. Now I say all this, but recently I posted uh, an Instagram Reel that was kind of like before and after, but I did it in a way where I was being clever. I was sharing a piece of information about why photographers edit their photos. And it, right now it's got a quarter million views. And if you're on Instagram and you're a photographer, there's a good chance you may have seen it. But the point I was trying to prove with that video is that you don't need to just do before and afters. If you can be clever and think of a way to show your photography that is more than just showing your photography, then you're creating content that people will more likely be interested in and more likely engage with. And oh my gosh, there is a massive tree. And I, can you see that? <laughs> Insect. This tree was not here two weeks ago. So clearly, clearly when we had that uh, thunderstorm, that hurricane, tornado, whatever you want to call it, this tree, uh, took a hit. Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll link that Instagram reel here, somewhere up here if I can. But the point I was trying to prove is that you can still show your before and afters and your photos if that's what you're interested in. You just need to have a little bit of creativity, whether that's telling the story behind a photo or going in a little bit more depth into a topic that other photographers are interested in, or even figuring out as a photographer, how do I make this interesting for people who aren't photographers, which the reality is the majority of Instagram users, the, the majority of TikTok users, the majority of YouTube users 
are not photographers and probably aren't as interested in your before and your afters as you think they are. So solution number one is tell the story or figure out a narrative around your photos that is not just the photo itself. You need to have some context. And solution number two, I think, is that most photographers aren't just photographers. There's something else they're doing that is attached to their photography that makes them interesting as a person or as a personality or as a content creator. Maybe you like going out to events or to parties and documenting them, or maybe you have a hobby that is bicycles or or knitting or whatever it is, the photography is just an element of everything else you do. So if you can figure out how to include that within your photos, how to include that aspect of storytelling, it's gonna make your photos way more exciting. Unfortunately, it does kind of feel like the days of being just a photographer are coming to an end. The reality is, is that video content is way more popular now than it has ever been. It gets the most attention, and I think we just need to figure out, like everyone else, like everyone else in every other niche, whether you're fitness, whether you're into hobby crafting or off-roading, whatever it is, we all have to figure out how to take our content, our ideas, and not just show them as still photographs, but say, how can we create a narrative? How can we turn this into a video, into a story that everyone else who is who is who you're creating content for, you're creating content for everyone else, how do you get them interested and engaged and invested into the things that you're doing? Here's what it comes down to. If you're only in it for the likes, the comments, the shares, the attention, then yeah, photo content, is kind of on the way out. But that's good news for some people, especially if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a small business, if you have something that you're trying to share with other people, to build knowledge and information around, then video content is an amazing way to do that. Photography is not dead. It's just one option of many for sharing your story, for telling people about your products, for getting people to understand a piece of information that you're trying to share. People are engaging with videos, but we all still very much like photos. So let a photo be a photo and let a video be a video.